his uh, girlfriend sp speaks a lot while they're having sex, and she wanted him to be more vocal as well. And um, so he comes and tells me that he's been trying, but he ran out of things to say. <laughs> so he wanted me to tell him <laughs> what else could he say. <laughs> So in the age of pornography, open relationships, all kinds of different marital issues that come up in our office, what happens when you get a couple where one person wants something totally different than the other person in their sex life? Well, I think there's really two, two major barriers. One is, you know, if I don't like you, I'm not going to want to have much sexual contact with you regardless of what it is. If I don't feel close to you and connected to you, I'm just not going to want to touch you or, or receive any touch from you. So that's one, that's just a kind of a relational, what it's a quality of the non-sexual relationship. But then the other piece is, is there really some fundamental difference in what turns each partner on? And I have had, you know, hundreds of couples over the years for whom at the end of the day, what the, the kind of theme inherent in their fantasy or, or sexual script it's, it's just, they, they're so far apart that it's really difficult. So I try to assess how much negotiation can there be, how close can they get to being on the same page, and I help them explore what the barriers are and what are the values keeping them from mm -hmm. connecting with their partner in that way to see mm -hmm. if there's any wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the first thing we'd help them communicate about sex. Mm -hmm. And that means that um, we'd put them in a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the, the thing that I think would, what comes out of a conversation like that is you may discover that there are real different um, uh, fantasies, real different desires and so forth. But what ultimately comes out of the focus on sexual stimulation is that it becomes a compensation for the relationship itself not having enough excitement and safety and so there's a uh, there's a kind of push for stimulation it's almost like you want a drug you want to experience something different and what happens when the conversation occurs and say we'll talk about what kind of sexuality do you have what kind would i have that that has to be mutual like that but what happens when there's the vulnerability of sharing a new level of connecting occurs and then mm -hmm. one begins to see that the other wishes were often symptomatic of something authentic and deep that was missing. And so then that can be move in and they have sort of a, an intimate, safe sexuality uh, actually begins to mitigate their uh, desire for something that would be unusual. Uh, if, if couples don't feel safe, then when they want something, it's either my way or your way and they're mutually exclusive. Like and. If you win, then I lose, and if I, you know, it's sort of a um, fight or flight. If they, but if they, they might still disagree. But if they can feel safe in the relationship and have um, times of res mutually respectful dialogue, they can move into the upper brain and learn to co-create and and experiment with well, how can we both get what we want mm -hmm. and really move. A healthy marriage is living in your upper brain. And it is, it is also an IQ test. If you are smart enough, you will figure it out. The safer you feel, the more you can go into the newer, you know, the neo I think it's an the, EQ test. Uh -huh. I think it's <laughs> emotional yes. intelligence. Yes, yes. That, yeah. that makes and both of those, and not, neither not of those IQ. are the, or when you're threatened. It, anxiety blocks the neural energy, energy and hijacks it in the lower part of the brain. Right. Yeah. So it's all, is it your way or my way? And it's a tug of war. I had a client, and I get this a lot because, um, you know, for some reason, I get clients that are very vocal and, and they're uh, experiencing a lot of issues that are seen today in, in the media. For example, I had a, this guy comes in and says that his uh, girlfriend is, speaks a lot while they're having sex, and she wanted him to be more vocal as well. And um, so he comes and tells me that 
he's been trying, but he ran out of things to say. <laughs> so he wanted me to tell him what else could he say. <laughs> and, and so sometimes I think that people are prone to do what the other wants just for the sake of their relationship. In this case, it was as simple as talking while they were having sex. So I think that um, the safety is very important. Mm -hmm. Uh, and understanding that what exactly it's a, um, that we need or we are lacking that another person is coming and if, we, if I don't feel comfortable with it, how could we go through it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, and again, communication, safety, bonding. And how yeah. would your partner know if you're comfortable or not if you don't have a conversation about it? Absolutely, right. yeah. yeah. Part, of, part of helping the couples heal is just giving them a safe place yep. and permission to talk about sex. And shifting from judgment to curiosity. Absolutely. Don't get judgmental about your partner, get curious. curious. Sometimes they just want to be listened to as they're talking about so their fantasies. And we live yeah, in a really exactly shame-based culture when it comes to sex. He's not connecting to me, he just wants to be with the shoe. 